Hey guys, Steve here from RC Models. Um, today I've got a video about the, um, the JLBJ 3 speed Vicar Bison. Um, uh, it's about an upgrade video I did. Um, I did a step by step video about me putting on a T bone racing bumper on this car, which is this one here. Um, I filmed it, I did it all step by step, and then something happened with my phone and I lost the. It didn't even record it, so. Anyway, so I'm going to have to show you what I did anyway. Now this here uh, bumper is um, exactly the same for the Vicar Bison, but obviously the chassis is different and I had to um, modify it in order to fit. So um, as well I've mounted it so it fits a little bit further out. And this bumper allows you to still use your LED lights as you can see through there. So same with uh, this one. And as you can see how far, like that's the original bumper there. Uh, this is the T1 Racing, how far that sticks out and what I've done to this one, I've made it stick out a lot more so, you know, it goes past the tyres that bit more than uh, this one does, so might offer like a bit more protection because uh, this, this, this car is a bashing car, obviously they both are and um, yeah, if I have, you know, sort of a head on or come off wrong from a jump and it's going to bite the ground a bit more, it's going to offer a bit more protection you know, so that's all good and all, so um, I'll show you what I've done to this, like I'll flip these cars over and I'll show you, hang on, I'll show you how they mount, just give us a sec, alright, so this is the Vicar Bison, so this one is specifically made for the Vicar Bison, it's that or the Helion Select 4 I believe it's called, which are exactly the same car, um, it's just you know, your different companies have made them or whatever, so um, this here is exactly what you get, so you get this piece here, right, that's all one piece, which is, um, yeah, attached to your chassis. Now, if you've got one of these Vicar Bisons, uh, underneath here is like your exposed servo arm that can get caught on things. So uh, this here is a really good upgrade because it's like a chassis brace which protects all that servo arm under there. Um, I can't really show you, but yeah. Anyway, so the mounting positions, you've got your three screws here, you've got two back here, and you've got one back here in the chassis. Well, so um, I actually asked T-Bone Racing to... Um, ship this here without the mounting holes, we'll just leave it but obviously leave everything else the same, just I want to put my own holes in for the chassis so this is what I've done, now I've it's exactly the same, um, the thing I've done is obviously I had to cut it down because um, well this one here like extends like just about halfway up the chassis so it would have come up to probably like this screw here something like that, so I've cut it way down and uh, made it a lot more narrow to fit on this part of the chassis. I have um, marked out all the holes and I countersunk the holes as well and I put slightly longer screws in. So yeah, another thing I did, you didn't have to do this, I used longer screws to put these bars on and I just put some washers in there as well, like that'll extend the bumper out just a little bit further. I oh, know you don't have to do that, I just did it. So yeah, what I was going to do as well, the last piece, because there's obviously another off cart to this, I was going to put just a little tiny, um, you know, chassis plate at the back here, but I haven't done that. It's not necessary. It'll just add to it and make it look a bit better and protect these screws from getting all marked up and gouging out where the bottom of the chassis there would hit the most. So yeah, that's that's that upgrade. I'm yeah, I really did do a step by step of me cutting this all out and uh, you know marking it and shaping it and what I did. The whole process but yeah I lost that video unfortunately so I'll turn these back over and I'll just show you what else I've done to them. Oh another thing this Vicar Bison like obviously this here is not proper like you know it comes with this here um, sits over there and protects it and that slots in there with a little oh god yeah there's a little tiny lip uh, on there you can't really see it it, it fits it slides in there and sort of locks in, but when you're doing jumps and stuff like that, people are having problems with their chassis um, breaking along along here. And um, when you do your jumps, it obviously does flex, and this here like pops open and allows dirt and your dust and your rocks to get in here. And this here's your diff in here, your center diff. So um, and it comes with a plastic spur gear. So the the girlfriend um ended up chewing up her spur gear. Uh, but this here was open, so it allowed all the dust and dirt to get in. Not only that, I noticed that her chassis is actually cracked. Can you see there? On either side, is cracked there. So she's up for a new chassis, so I'm going to have to be putting that in. Not only that, 
I um, previously I already ordered this here for it. Now that that was what I was gonna do. I didn't know her chassis was cracked, but now it is. So this here is a chassis plate for this car, which that'll stop um, it flexing. Like this is it's pretty hollowed alloy plate. So that they'll go on and that'll solve that problem. Well, it should, and we'll stop that there from busting open and obviously cracking your chassis. Um, yeah, so now I've got to order a new chassis, so she can't run this yet. And uh, not only that, she's up for a new diff or at least a spur gear. Um, does anyone know if you can get an actual steel spur gear for this that fits straight on and you know bolts onto the existing centre diff? Because um, yeah, I'd be interested in that. I'm, I'm not sure. I know you can obviously get the plastic ones, but um, yeah, so that's that. So and then anyway, but on this one. I'll just show you a couple of things that I did to it. Nothing major. You all know I um, upgrade the shocks. Like, you know, so they're, they're nice and plush. It comes up nice and slow now. Like, much better. As before, previously, it was just like there was no oil in it and it was just springing. But, um, yeah, not only that, I have this gyro that I put in here. Excellent upgrade for this, by the way. Uh, because you got a. Um, a um, slipper clutch in here and that's set like pretty loose as well like it'll still really in a way but it will slip a lot too so it's yeah it's good um, excellent for bashing we'll set up like this with the gyro yeah it's like a, a necessary thing like if you want real control on loose surfaces that's what you want on a gyro or if not I believe the center diff for the Vicar Bison should fit straight in there from what I've read it's a, a direct fit so if you don't want this you want a center diff uh, you can go ahead and just put that in um, yeah but this here as well now this here is two heat sinks and what I've done like both of them come with a fan like this but obviously they didn't fit like both of them in there so I couldn't have two fans on there which is no big deal so what I've done if I rotate this around a bit what I've done, you can't really see. I actually had to cut some of this one off. I had to remove the fan, cut it down so it just fits in perfectly. And then I um, stuck tape on either side. So um, all the fins run horizontal and fit in with each other. So like the fan, it's obviously pushing the air in and going in between all these fins like right back here. So it's like acting like a much better heat sink. So one fan's doing, you know, cooling the whole lot. And uh, yeah, it's been working out pretty good. Um, tyres, excellent, love it. Looks cool on the car too. Like they are a bit taller than the stock cars, so you do get an extra, it'll make you go an extra couple k's faster. It's just like going up, like say a tooth or two on your pinion gear, you'll get more top speed by putting larger, like taller tyres on your car. So that's another thing there. Um, as well, like you can see, this here is the, um, what I put on. That's how far it sticks out. So yeah, not too bad of an upgrade. I like the fact that you can still use your LED lights through there if you need to, but I hardly have mine on anyway. Um, and the blue servo here, the HD, uh, it's a power HD servo. Um, it's 20 kilos, that's performing really good. And it is waterproof, and I've got nothing to complain about with that one there. One issue is, I'm not sure, is um, this ESC that come with this um, Racer Star, this is a combo, so Racer Star motor, Racer Star 120 amp ESC, the on off button is right there. Now I'm having trouble, when I plug it in and I go to use it, I'm having trouble turning the thing on, it's like you got to hold it down for 10-20 seconds before it starts up. Not only that, when you go to turn it off, you can't, um, you can press the button and it doesn't turn off. Like you can hold it for as long as you want, it doesn't turn off, I just have to unplug the battery, which is no big deal, but the thing is, I know it's not working properly. And um, when I plug in my um, uh, batteries here, uh, this is what I'm using. So it's a 3S, uh, whatever that is, Flurion, whatever. Uh, 4,500 milliamps, they fit perfectly in the car. Um, I'm only getting like, say, 5 minutes run time, which is ridiculous. So something's eating up the battery. So I don't know what that is, where the girlfriend's car, she runs the same sort of batteries and she'll get three, four times as long. She'll have no trouble getting like 20 minutes just about out of, out of, out of these packs, where I can get like five, 10 minutes max, like it's, it's, it's not long. 
Like she will easily, yeah, she just runs a lot longer, runs rings around me because I've got to change my batteries all the time. So I'm guessing the ESC is doing something wrong because it's having trouble turning on and off. So it's not working properly. If anyone's got any idea, like, could it be a problem with the motor? I don't know. Drawing too much power or amps or whatever, voltage. Could it be the ESC? I know the on-off switch isn't working properly. Or any other reason. Like, all I'm running is the fan which that doesn't take up much power. Hers is running the same fan. Um, and I don't have my LEDs plugged in. As you can see, like here's the LED thing there. So I'm not using lights. I know that ain't, LEDs don't use that much power, but that's not the problem either. So basically I'm running the same sort of system, different systems, but the same sort of thing, like same size motor, a little bit different KV. This KV is about, I think 150 KV bigger, which is basically nothing. 120 amp ESC, 120 amp ESC in her Vicar Bison um, yeah anyone's got any ideas like would it be the ESC let me know in the comments because yeah it's I'm scratching my head and I don't know what to do whether I just go ahead and buy another one of them in a hope or in the motor or is it something else I mean the servo I can't see it being a servo but yeah anyway it's just a quick video it's it was basically about the um, your T-bone racing bumper I'll fit this back on. So yeah, if you wanted to do this up, upgrade on this, all you got to do is um, well you got to do a bit of customization. So you got to ask T-Bone Racing not to do um, um, the holes in the chassis, like where it bolts onto the chassis, as you know, like that there, how it connects because it's completely different. So you got say at least five, six screws depending on how you want to mount it in there. And on the Vicar Bison, how it actually comes, you've got the three major ones there, plus the two there and the one in the back. So, and obviously you've got to cut it down to make it fit, because uh, it's a lot wider in between here, and that'll interfere with your A-arms. So, say if that there was the edge, it'd probably come out to about here. So you had to cut, like, yeah, it's about this wide all the way through. So you had to cut a lot of it off. You know, I started with my Dremel tool, and, um... Yeah, then I finished it. I did. I just started right at the end with a Dremel just to get it started, and then I used a hacksaw just to cut it off. So, because the Dremel was just melting the plastic and flicking it everywhere, and it was a bit of a mess. So, finished it off with a hacksaw. Um, I may do the little tiny chassis player at the back, and maybe try and do a video on that, as long as it's all good. And uh, yeah, I did. I'm not sure, but I, I know I stuck this out. It's a little bit further out than this one, obviously as you can see, that's a normal bumper and that's T-Bone Racing, normal bumper, T-Bone Racing, so it's out a bit further. Because, um, yeah, I was just, yeah, I want more protection so it's out further than tyres. If I was doing a jump and I was nose diving or something, or nose dive straight into a tree or something like that, I'd rather it stick out more than the tyres, because if you have a whack, yeah, you know, I don't know, it just gives it more protection. So the further that comes up, like if you push that and then it works on it'll end up pushing on this here the original bumper so you can see how that flexes there so that's the original bumper but this has got a fair way to go before it pushes against the existing one and then it then it like you know works so it gives you a lot more protection it'll slow your car down a lot more and I actually put in a if you can see a block of foam I've wedged in there so it acts as more like more of a dampening when it does so it's more sort of resistance when you do have a whack and obviously these uh, washers are not included, but um, I put them in there just to bring that out. As you can see, it just brings it out a little bit further, which is what I wanted. So, not too sure if it's a bit overkill, the distance, but all in all, I think it looks still okay. As you can see there, comes out a fair ways, but I don't have a problem with it. It should be alright. We'll see how it goes. I haven't run it with it. Um, that's it guys, that's just an update on those two. Um, yeah, I'll do, yeah. Thanks for watching.